Hello YouTube, this is Sam Gerrans from quarternight.com. Today is Monday the 21st of February 2022. And if I look a bit rough, it's because I basically haven't eaten properly for about four or five weeks. I've been on this uh, extremely arduous diet and uh, on, on top of which uh, now I have to <laughs> no food for four days. So uh, <clears throat> it takes its toll, but it's very good for your health. I actually feel great. But if I look a little bit, raw, you know, rough around the edges, that's the reason why. Now, what I wanted to do today was uh, make a briefish talk on, uh, especially as I get to, towards the end of this project, um, on the question of what I would call modernizing Muslims and the, the, the problems that they're going to face. Um, I, I don't have anybody in particular in mind. I really don't. I'm just talking about tendencies. And um, what I see is that, well, what I realized is that when I started this work, I think a lot of people thought that, ah, you know, this guy is going to be a sort of liberal um, version of, of, of Islam or present this. And uh, some people don't like it that that hasn't been the case. And um, I don't really care about that. But what I, I re what I see is that what's quite clear is that the hadithan is finished, the, the sort of traditionalist, that whole... Um, that whole narrative is done and the reason why it's done is because people have, like myself and others have gone through and demonstrated on the basis of the book that they claim as their foundational scripture that this other narrative is at unambiguous odds with this and uh, especially as we go into what's now called globalism which is really the standardization of all uh, people into just units and 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 ones and zeros um i think that some people got the idea that, well, now all bets are off. You can just basically, you know, pluck your values out of the sky. And there are people who are doing that. But I, I had a few thoughts on this. And the first one is to do with science. Um, science is a narrative. Science is a mythology. Science has to be believed. Science is a story. Science is um, always changing its story. Western science is doesn't know anything about the actual reasons for things. What it what it that tries to do is to describe some of the what or at least give names to things that it says are the what and then go no deeper than that it can't go very deep because it's trying to use uh, empiricist um, uh, tools to understand something which is essentially spiritual in nature uh, it's a bit like trying to you know dig the sea out with a spade so it's 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 using a feather to crack a rock and there's just it's just no way that it can it can really do that. What it can do is it can produce stuff. It can, it's really an engineering project that's that uh, purports to be a philosophy, and it's 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 an exercise in pragmatism, and it's always changing its theories. In fact, what most people think scientists believe uh, is about 30, 40, 50 years out of date. Um, and you, you, this it's a religion, and it's it has a worldview, and that worldview is really enforced upon the people and what it's very good at this worldview is convincing you that you're nothing but a, a unit in a in a machine and that life has no meaning and all the rest of it it's a religion that's what it is and so but a lot of people are like rabbits trapped in the headlights of this religion and they think that if they can sort of seem to make their scriptures and in this case we're talking about the quran comport with the the dominant religion it thereby arrogates to itself some sort of credibility um that may seem to be the case in a very short um a short timeline the problem with this you have to understand is once you've lived a few years, you realize that the stories that, that science, uh, so-called, um, throws out change all the time. The goalposts are endlessly changing. And really what it is is an exercise in utilitarianism. It's just it, it wear any, any garb it needs to get to the next thing that it needs to do. And if you try to comport with that, you're painting yourself into a corner really quickly. And so people who, who do this, whether it's in the Quranic area of, of, of research or the Bible or whatever, and you can read books on Hinduism, they, they try to do it too. Uh, and especially what's interesting is if you read books, whichever religion, where they're doing this from 30, 40, 50 years ago, and you just see how ridiculous it looks because they're trying to kind of get in with the new kid on the block. So what I'm trying to say is that if you follow this line, you you're stuffed um, because science will throw you over, you know, throw you under the bus, as they say, uh, 
in, in no time at all. And science, it's 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 a it's more like a combine harvester. It's it's it doesn't really have any attachment to the things that it processes. This is true also for the. If you, what, what I also see is people trying to make the Quran comport with very recent delusions, and they are delusions. Well, the science thinks delusion too, uh, about men and women, for example. Now, I'm old enough, I'm 54 years old, I'm old enough to, to know that uh, men did not always believe the errant nonsense that's put about today. I know, because I grew up in the 1970s, and so you don't actually have to be that old anymore to, to realize that you know, the goalposts are shifting. Now, whether you like it, you don't like it or not, the fact is, grammatically, the Qur'an is... Uh, directed to either Muhammad in the in in the the singular, or the body of believers in the plural, masculine plural, or to you know whoever it is the the unbelievers, or it, it addresses a, a range of archetypal audiences and talks to them in almost exclusively in the masculine. Okay, it regards as axiomatic that men are the leaders of their societies. Women and, and men in the Quranic presentation are different. Now, if you don't like that because you've been infected by some very recent virus that's been developed by the Frankfurt School in, you know, in, in rooms by men who really do understand how to get what they want, and you've just picked this up and uh, accepted it and think that you can take this to the Quran and just sort of run with it, well, you know, you may you may get some brownie points in a sort of you know beta male sense in the short term, but you have to understand this is going to turn around and bite you too in the same way as the whole so-called science thing is going to is going to turn around and bite you. So you you might as well stick with what the Quran says. I have a verse. I'm not going to throw it up on the screen right now because it slows the whole process down. But it is um, sort of 68 verse nine. They wish that thou shouldst compromise. Then would they compromise? And, and ain't that the truth? That's the, precisely what they want. They want you to kind of get with their religion. I just call it what it is, which is a religion. Um, another, another. so you've got the whole feminist and feminizing um, soy boy sort of green hair idea as well. That the Quran is really a, a book about feminism. No, it's not. If you don't like it, don't read it. But it isn't that. It's quite clear. Uh, that it is what it is, and to say, well, ah, oh, right, well, we we don't believe this, we don't believe that. Well, then you don't believe the Quran, then, do you? That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. I mean, at least have the honesty, just to walk away from it. But if you're going to say yes, we take this as a scripture, and then try to bend it into the delusions of today, um, then I would say you're being less than honest. And not only that. Pretty much everyone's less than honest today. Not only are you being less than honest, you are uh, setting yourself self up for for humiliation down downstream. It's a bit like let's take take it away from the Quran for a moment. It's a bit like the Christians, or certain types of Christians. I need to be a bit more specific. Certain types of Christians who are forever working out when the day of judgment is supposed to be coming, and uh, I mean if, you know, it, it, it's laughable. But let's just take the Jehovah's Witness as, as an example. I mean, first of all, Jesus was supposed to be coming back. Well, actually, he was supposed to be coming back in the 1800s, and then he didn't. And so they said it was 1914, and then it wasn't, so they moved it to 1918, and then that didn't happen. So they, they keep kicking the, the, the can down the road. Uh, I think the last one they had was, oh, I forget now, was it 1980? I think that was the last, maybe that was the last one. Perhaps it was 1970, I can't remember. But anyway, they decided they keep changing it so that it wasn't that uh, Jesus was coming back in 1914, but there would still be people alive who had been alive in 1914 at the time that Jesus came back. And oh no, now that's not true. And now they just basically try to brush it under the carpet. This is the kind of, this is what happens to you if you, if you start, you know, bending your story. And it's a bit it's a bit different here because you have externals. I mean the, the Jehovah's Witness kind of did this to themselves. But in the case of trying to bend scripture to very um kind of new 
ideologies, well, new, I mean, there's not much new under the sun. These ideologies have kind of been around before in, in different forms, but, but they're new to us. What you're doing, rather than sticking to your guns, you should just say, no, this isn't right. <laughs> you know? Because you can be sure that if you hang around long enough, um, it'll come back. Uh, I don't know if it's true, but there's supposedly a story where the American Indians say, if, if you wait by the if you sit by the river long enough, the, the bodies of your enemies will come floating by. And that's just one of the benefits of having lived a bit. You, you, you start to see that this is what happens. Stick to your guns. I mean, either you believe in the Quran if you don't. My view is, if it's not from God, let's all just go to the pub. That, that basically is it. If it is, then, then, then certain things follow from that. But to pretend to hold to it and then try to ingratiate yourself with a godless, materialistic solipsistic, narcissistic, fascistic ideology of um, hypocrisy seems to me a complete waste of time. I, re I really don't get it. I don't understand it at all. Uh, the next point, of course, would be the whole homosexual agenda, which has been rolled out in the last 30 years. Oh, you know, people who would have stopped and retched in the street to see what they see today now, you know, without batting an eyelid. In fact, pretend not to see what they can see. Um... Well, again, you you have to consider what does the Quran say about this? Well, it's quite clear that it's a sin. Uh, people don't like this word anymore. And they don't like anything to do with reality, but it is. And trying to sort of somehow bend this scripture into conformity with this. Well, how far are you going to go? Uh, I, I mean, you don't have to be a genius to work out where this is going. I mean, they started off with just you know wanting to be accepted, and now you lose your job if you if you don't smile quick enough and uh, celebrate 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 sexual perversion. That's based. That's where we are now. Now you you can you can quote unquote celebrate sexual perversion if that's your you know if that's what you want to do, but but you can't hold on to this book at the same time because it's, it's it's absolutely clear on this subject. And my point. Is, is, is kind of slightly broader than this, is that when you start compromising with it, there's no end to it. Because this system is, is well, it's psychopathic, and it doesn't matter. You cannot placate it. It will not be placated. It's, it's more like a mathematical function than it really is like a set of finite demands. It doesn't matter how much you give it. It's always going to want more. It's just waiting for you to give it that so that it can feed on that to move forward to the next thing that it wants. So you can't, you can't, um, you, you can't placate it. You can't ever feed it enough. It's not never, it's not capable of being satisfied. You have to understand that this thing is at war with you. And sooner or later, you're going to have to just face that. And you might as well start now you, while you still have your integrity. And I really don't understand um, so-called modernizing Muslims. They seem to me, to quite frankly, to, to lack integrity. Just walk away from it. If you don't want to believe it, then don't believe it. That doesn't bother me in the slightest. But to claim that you do, and yet to um, not to embrace the things that go with that, that's just hypocrisy, isn't it? Um, personal responsibility, yeah. I mean, something you should understand, the whole... Uh, shtick of the socialistic materialistic society that we live in uh, is fundamentally there's no personal responsibility uh, there can't be because under this philosophy human beings are just units and if anything bad happened to you it can't be your you know your responsibility it has to be something they have to legislate about you know we need some new laws and you've been oppressed or you had a bad childhood or you didn't get enough vitamins or whatever it was. And um, whereas the fact is that actually hard times, they create the great men, they just do. And But, you know, that's all elided from the, from the narrative. The, you have the whole idea that it's always someone else's fault. I mean, as a, a white male, you know, clearly I've been on the receiving end of this all my life. Somehow everything is, is my fault, which is news to me but there you are no one takes any responsibility everyone is a minority everybody you know white people as well certain types you know they're they're minorities as well it's all somebody else's fault well that's not what the quran says it doesn't say it you know you you stand alone they will on the day of judgment you give answer for yourself so the, the quran is not a socialistic book 
of you know um, sort of core corporate um, communal um, punishment. It is you standing before God giving account for you. And this is anathema to, to moderns. They don't take responsibility for anything. Look, look, go on to any news site, you know, the Guardian or the Independent, I mean, are laughingly called news. But you won't find the, the word responsibility, accountability, anything there, not in any real sense. It's all about emotions, accused of, you know, um, so-and-so and so-and-so was, you know, was being criticised for this or criticised for that. But no discussion of actual responsibility. Everyone's talking about rights. Women all want this. They want, you know, exactly the same as what men want. But men do different stuff. That's why they have, you know, they have actual... <laughs> they actually have to take responsibility for things. So now what we're living in is, what I'm trying to get to, is we're living in an age in which delusion and solipsism and, you know, having feelings is some sort of confused, conflated with some sort of object reality. Um, but the Quranic narrative is totally different to that. So... If you if you know if you want to dye your hair green and start screaming in the corner and you know railing about safe spaces and all that, knock yourself out. I couldn't care less. What I'm trying to say though is you're in open defiance, open contradiction with the book that you're claiming to follow. So so just give it up. Just walk away from it. Um. Yeah, the point is too that the goalposts in this always change. So whilst you might get a few minutes in the sun, whilst the agenda wants to use you, uh, sooner or later it'll throw you under the bus. So you might as well just stick to your guns, stick to what the Quran says, and 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 take it on the chin, rather than trying to um, ingratiate yourself with something which basically despises you. Last two points is uh, number one is if you look at the way these uh, these things are presented. I, I, I'll put a link down below to a recent talk um, I did about the, the the difference between hermeneutics, exegesis, exposition, and you know, sort of personal theory. All of this stuff, this modernizing Muslim stuff, is really in the area of personal theory. And personal theories, there's nothing um, intrinsically wrong with them. It's just not built on anything. Uh, so and and also where is what have you written down where is your hermeneutical process because what you're actually doing is just plucking values out of the ether and anyone can do that so the, there isn't there isn't anything anyone can check it's just we say it means this maybe it does maybe it doesn't who knows um but the Quran claims to be from God, that he will protect it. That, that it's, he says, if, if it was from other than God, you would find within it much contradiction, which means it must be consistent. So demonstrate on a consistent basis across the totality of the corpus that the values that you're extracting from this book are in any way justified. But you don't see that. What you see is emotions um, and not much more than that. Um, yeah, and... Finally, you know, my argument would be that if this is this is your policy, you'd be better off just dumping it. Just have the have the balls just to walk away, saying, you know, you know what, I don't believe this. I, I I'm I'm going to dye my hair green and sit in the corner and cry about my entitlement or whatever it is, or someone else's entitlement. I, I get mixed up with the terminology now. But you know, do us all a favor, just walk away. Um, this sort of um, beta male thing where you you understand everybody and everybody's point of view and oh yes women this and oh yes homosexuals that and all blah 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 you're just humiliating yourself if you haven't got the haven't got the balls to stand up you know stand on this book on the basis of its contents then just leave it you know go and get a social work degree and leave us all in peace there you are that's it that's all for today i hope everyone's well uh as i've said i'm kind of getting towards the end of this project so the reason why i wanted to put this out there is just so that it's on record um i don't have anyone in particular in view in this uh, i just see a tendency i and then i'm addressing that tendency in a general way and leaving other people if they decide to look at my work to see what i think about it um that's it i hope everyone's well that's all for now if you're listening on youtube you can download my full translation of the quran and all other work free 
using the button in the top right hand corner or buy the hard copy there at 10% less than on Amazon. You can download the audio from my YouTube videos to your mobile device using the links in the drop down below. I recommend meetquoranites.com to connect with other Quran alone believers. Like if you like, comment if you have something constructive to say and subscribe to get more each week. And use the link in the drop down below to donate if you would like to help me keep doing this. And remember, this life is short. Eternity is long. If you want good trees, plant good seeds.